Is there anybody here on the team that doesn't work well? They're kind of like a bad apple. <laughs> I'm here with Flynn at the University of Michigan. I am here to get a tour of their workshop to see all the work they put in before the competition. Uh, Flynn, what's your role on the team again? Uh, I'm the team captain of M Racing. All right, and what's your responsibility as the team captain? Um, I essentially handle all the upper level management of the team. Um, that largely has to do with fundraising, sponsorships, um, and then team management. So a lot of the logistics side of the team um, we do have a technical director who's in charge of all of the engineering of the car itself. Uh, and that's kind of how we split that role up. So you're like a dynamic duo. Yeah, a dynamic duo. That's the Both way have so. your hands full. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> right. for sure. So what do we have going on behind us right now? Um, just behind me is our monocoque manufacturing tool layup. Um, what we do is design and manufacture an entirely carbon fiber chassis for our um, race car. Um, essentially, there's two parts of it. So we have to design the tool um, which is the outer shell of the monocoque. And then what we do is we sandwich those two things together and lay up carbon fiber on the inside of it, um, which you can see going on right behind me here. How long does that normally take to build that? Um, the entire process from the start. Um, so the design, of course, we start back in about June, July. Um, the actual manufacturing process of the tool, we started back in November. That took about a month to finish. And then we had winter break. And then we've been working at this ever since. So it's all, all told about three months of work. Okay, and how, how long you, is your team in the workshop working on, the, on this car? Um, every week we're in here pretty much all days, all hours. Um, we have late nights, we have early mornings. Um, so there's really no like set time we're working. Um, a lot of people on the team will spend about 40 hours plus a week um, here, and that's on top of being a full-time student as well. Um, so we really take pride in what we do, but that does come with the cost of a lot of time and a lot of hard work behind the scenes. Does it pay off though, you know? Oh yeah, it definitely yeah. pays off, more, like more, more than I can say ever. It's, it's really, um, everything I've completed on this team, everything that I've done, this goes for everyone else on the team, um, far outweighs the successes they've had in school. Um, this team opens up so many more doors and an education um, than like what you'll learn in the classroom ever will. So it's really important that everyone on the team does what they do here. And Flynn, let's get to know you, man. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Seattle, Washington. Um, born and raised on the West Coast, and I came out here to Michigan just well, because. Out here. Yeah, it's just a, a great school. Um, really enjoy. Um, it was number one. It was a new opportunity for me. I'd never been to the Midwest before coming here, and I knew that Michigan was the epicenter of cars. I knew my whole life that I wanted to get involved in the auto industry, um, so I came to the, the center place and the birthplace of it all. So. And you like it? I really do like it. The weather is a little bit more than I ever thought I'd handle, um, but the just the opportunities. Not only here at the Wilson Center um, and with what M Racing is off, was what M Racing has given me, um, but just the the school as a whole is just a great school to go to, and I'm really proud to be a Michigan Wolverine. And uh, I'm looking at your workbench over here; it's pretty yeah. organized. Is it yeah. always this organized? Um, no, our workspace is not always <laughs> this organized. Of course, with the amount of work that we do here comes a lot of disorganization. Um, of course, that is kind of the bane of this uh, this amount of work. Um, yeah. So we definitely have to do. Um, yeah, I just that, that's the short answer. You know, it's not always as organized. So. Oh, but is organization important to your team and success, or do you think? Yeah, we definitely do have like team cleanups every other week or so, um, just to make sure the space stays mostly organized. Um, of course, we do have all of our tools laid out in very um, good areas here. You can see the toolboxes and stuff. We do we do a good job of um, organization of individual things. But as we do more and more work, we have just more and more uncleanliness kind of start to take hold. So we need to manage that while we keep going. So, yeah. yeah, clean while you go. It's like cooking, right? Yeah, exactly. Do you cook as a college student? No, I right? do cook you do? sometimes, right. not as much as I used to last year when I was just a leadership, was just lead on the team. But now you know, um, with, my, with my larger <laughs> leadership position, I don't really have the time to cook much anymore. Yeah. So it's a lot of frozen foods. And, yeah, it's, <laughs> That's it's, a good time. It's, it's a college lifestyle for sure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is essentially our entire like nuts, uh, fasteners, ratchets, um, all the kind of smaller parts that we need every day to work on the car. Um, we work entirely with Imperial units for what, most of our history. Um, so these are all of our Imperial fasteners um, and um, tools right here. Um, over here, we have a lot of our metric stuff as well as a lot of smaller tools. So we have scissors and stuff, power tools, um, just drills and stuff as well. So we really just 
have it all, all of our tools are mostly organized in here. These are the common tools used for almost every system on the car. Um, however, a lot of subsystems will have tools that are really only suited for them, so they'll have them in their separate workspaces, which are all along here on the back shelves, as well as over there in our powertrain area. Well, we saw you were working on the computer over here. What were you working on? Yeah, so right now I'm working on the cam for tracing out the flies for the monocoque. So we have prepreg carbon fiber that we're going to lay up inside here. That's the next step of the manufacturing of our chassis. And to do that, we have to trace out the right shapes to make sure we're not you know, overcutting or adding extra weight to our overall chassis. So we trace everything out with the CNC shop bot in the back. And so I'm just working on the cam for that and getting that ready. So what's cam again? Cam is computer aided manufacturing. Right. So basically I put the, the trace that we want to do the outline of in Fusion 360 and then it will generate G-code based on that so that we can communicate with the machine and it'll do everything for us. Very cool. Also, I noticed that your monitor's upside down. Is that on purpose? No, I think it's just always been like that. I've never okay. flipped it over. It's just, it's just <laughs> always like been it. upside down. I like it. It's a fun down. little thing. Yes. And what else, as a technical director, what else are you responsible for on this team? So I'm really responsible for guiding all of our directors. At the beginning of the year, I set the goals for our vehicle, and that's based on what points we want to get at the competition in order to place what a replacement, and our goal, of course, is to win. So our points goals come from there, and then we use a simulator to figure out what that means in terms of vehicle metrics. So mass, power output, torque capabilities, all of that stuff. So we set all of those requirements based on simulation, and it's my job to guide the directors to make sure that they're reaching those goals, uh, both from a technical perspective and from a timeline perspective. So I manage their timeline. And then once we get to manufacturing season, I also manage all of the manufacturing. Um, and I help out wherever it's needed, make sure things look good and are up to our standard. Wow. So a lot. You do a lot. Yes. And. Uh, what, what year are you in college? I'm a junior. A junior, okay. So will you be tech in the chief technical director? <laughs> will you be technical director next year too? Um, I will not be technical director because I will actually be gone for a student placement at Mercedes. Oh, okay. So I won't be at the university for next year, but I'll be coming back after that. Okay, so. cool though. So what's the favorite part of being on, on the team? Definitely seeing everything that is in CAD. We do all of our CAD and Siemens NX. So seeing all of that come to life physically and then getting out into the parking lot to do testing and watching the car actually work and then being able to see how the car is performing, see how we're doing in terms of timing. Uh, that's the most rewarding part of being on the team. So that's my favorite part. Nice. And what uh, do you get to drive the car at all? So we do a driver day every year for people who put in a lot of work to the car. So yeah. I'll eventually get to drive it, but I'm not one of the drivers. Okay. But you get to feel it. Yes. Yeah. Eventually. And how many hours do you spend a week in the workshop? That's a good question. Um, I'm here every weekend for at least eight hours. And then during the weekday, I'm here probably seven hours. Depends. So seven hours a day or seven hours a week? Seven hours a day. Okay, so you're here. And then eight hours on weekends. All the time. Probably the best estimate I could give you. That's, that's good. And uh, I guess all that time leads to all these awards, right? Yeah, so we've done really well the past couple of years, especially before we merged as well. So we had the combustion team and the electric team. Both of those did really well in their own categories, and then we merged. And so now we're solely an electric team, and we, we do pretty well. Okay, and uh, what made you guys merge into one team, an electric team? It was a combination of where the industry is moving as well as like the resources of the team. So it made a lot more sense to combine the resources and be a team that had specialties in different areas. For example, the combustion team, the people who were manufacturing the monocoque on that side or the half monocoque on that side helped bring that knowledge over to the electric team because that wasn't really there. Okay. And so, of course, the people on the electric team brought in the knowledge of, you know, electronics, building a battery pack, yeah. all of the boards and the low voltage architecture that comes with it. There was knowledge there, too. So merging the resources as well as going along with, okay, the industry is moving in this way. So, you know, we wanted to do the same.
Nice. And were you on the IC team at all or always on the electric side? I came in right after the teams merged. Okay. So I've only ever been a member of the merged team. Okay. And that's why they're doing so well, right? Yeah. <laughs> How many years have you been on the team? Yeah, I came in my freshman year. I joined at the very, very start. I came to one of our testing days okay. and just have been on ever since. Uh, sophomore year, I was the powertrain director. Okay. So I led the design and manufacturing of the high voltage system on the car, the low voltage system, everything that comes with that. So. All right. Yeah, it seems like a good team environment. Everyone seems to work well together. Is there anybody here on the team that doesn't work well? They're kind of like a bad apple? <laughs> I don't think we have any <laughs> bad apples. Oh, okay, we, good. It, you know, it's definitely a challenge figuring out how different people communicate because some people they solely work virtually on the team. Like we have a couple of people who will, you know, they never come into the shop. And then we have people who are like diehard, like I'm always in the shop, I'm always there, I'm always working, you know, hands-on with something or yeah. doing CAD. So it's definitely a mix throughout the team and a mix of different communication types as well. Some people are very quiet, some people are very outspoken. So right. making sure that all of that goes well so that we get everything done and that we don't end up with something falling behind just because the person was afraid to speak up. Right. Um, making sure that never happens is really important. So, yeah. And that's that's on you as the team main or technical director, right? Or is that more Flynn's realm? That's that's really both of us. Okay. We, we like to make sure that the team is working well together. Him and I will talk, you know, if he notices an issue on the team that I don't particularly catch, we'll talk about it and we'll work it out together. Okay, nice. A nice dynamic duo. I think I said it earlier when I was talking to him. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to me, Chloe. Yeah, for sure. It was fun. Nice to meet yeah. you. And have fun with the cam. Oh yes, more cam, always. <laughs> <laughs> this is from an old valve cover of ours from our old combustion days. As you can see, some damage was done there. These are essentially all just old parts that have been broken, old IGBTs from our motor controllers that must have blown up at some point, um, old pistons. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like keepsake from our old combustion days, trying to remember where we're from. So. It's like it's like your uh, it's your museum show. Exactly, right? it's a little museum we have here. I also have something else pretty cool if you want to show. I got the the old helmet. That's not works. We're not legally allowed to wear this anymore. It's also disgusting, but it's a little like wing helmet from our from the nineties. It's pretty dusty though, but we like to keep it. Since February, what else went into this car? A lot. Uh, we've been working like crazy to get this car ready. Redesigning stuff, testing. Um, I don't think we had driven the car when you guys visited, so we've been driving every weekend that we can, ripping it around in the parking lot, trying to get data, tune our controls algorithms, make sure our cooling's all working, make sure our gears turn well, everything. I heard that you guys merged, your IC and EV team merged back in 2022. How did that work out? Uh, worked out really well. Um, I mean, there were some growing pains. Our EV team designed everything in metric. Um, our IC team designed everything in Imperial. So our first like full team EV car was all metric. And then um, all the IC people realized how hard it is to manufacture in metric in America. Um, so we didn't make that mistake again. Other than that though, it, it was pretty smooth. What was the biggest struggle you guys faced? Some decent EMI issues this year. EMI wasn't terrible uh, as compared to last year, but that was still something, something we had to work through. Um, and then just overall tuning of the car. Our viewers out there, what's EMI? Electromagnetic interference. Basically, when you have the alternating current electricity that electric motors need, um, that alternating current generates a magnetic field, which then um, can distort and disrupt some of the signals going around the car. So then, data doesn't get where it needs to be, and so the car just doesn't move or moves weirdly. And nobody needs that, right? Uh, what's your what's your role on the team? So I'm the drivetrain director. So my job is to essentially manage everything on the car that is mechanical and makes the car go fast. Um, so I do brakes, cooling, and our gearboxes. And how fast does your car go? I mean, we top out at like 80 miles an hour, but I mean, speed isn't really 
the point here, right? It's like how fast can you corner? How fast can you do a lap? And I mean, we can pull, we can pull two G's accelerating or under braking. We can pull just about 1.8 to two in, in cornering. Is there a dynamic event you're most excited to see your car perform in? Autocross, 100%. Yeah, seeing that car throw down a lap is just so cool. Yeah. We'll be sure to get that and throw it in the highlight, right? For sure. Do you have a favorite part of uh, participating on a formula team? Learning. Learning everything. I have learned more working on formula than pretty much all of my upper level classes combined. Um, I don't like just learning theory. It's it's great to actually apply it and like that's what is going to get us a job. So it's hands-on experience. Yeah.